from Capital Tonight, we've had the great privilege and fortune to interview one of the last members of the resistance against the Norman Conquest, uh, Mr. Hereward the Wake. Good evening, Hereward. Good evening. Uh, first of all, uh, Hereward, why are you holding... You asked me about the fucking Normans? Those French froggy bastards? You ask me why I'm holding out against them? Why do you think I'm holding out against them? Why do you think I'm holding out against them? Do you know why I'm holding out against them? Because they're French. Because this is England. And I'm English. And I don't want a load of foreigners coming over on this land. This is Ely. And the French and the Normans, they will not take it. They will not take it. Do you hear me? But, but, the, but the French have brought you such wonderful inventions such as flushing toilets, the bidet, perfume. Uh, but surely on the Isle of Ely you must need such facilities. Excuse me a minute, Bob. I just got, I think I got a grub from earlier in my ear. Look, let's be honest about it. Do you know what the French brought us? Do you know what they've actually brought us? Have you heard of it? Yes, uh, flushing toilets, bidets, perfume. Bob, have you heard of herpes? That's what the French brought us. Do you know that? Now, my brother, Craig, he got herpes from a French girl. It's not very nice, especially not in the mornings. So, we don't want these French over here with all their fucking ways. This is England. Um, surely, Harold, <laughs> as most of your experience has been with sheep, uh, how can your population, the small population, of what we French, we Norman English think of as retards, be concerned with herpes? Look, you think the French know how to cook? You talk to me about cooking? Do you know, do you know how to baste a lamb, Bob? In Ely, we are specialist basters of lambs. And I can tell you, the French are there, not got a patch on us, because we know what we're doing. I've grown up in the marshes all my life. And do you think I'm going to let some French person come along? Since I was a little boy, I've been in the marshes, I've been catching eels, I do my poos in there. You, you talk about flushing toilets, just use the marsh, that's what I do. In fact, anything does it, doesn't cause anybody any problems, does it? What do you say to that, Bob, with your, with your very clever French questions? Well, what I'm thinking about is, is personal hygiene. I'm thinking about a unified England um, where everybody sings from the same song sheet. A place where anybody can walk unmolested and feel free to spend their French francs wherever they want. Look, Bob, if, if it was a case in Ely that people walked around unmolested, I would never have been born, would I? I, I don't understand. Do you think, do you think that I'm going to let this country be taken over by the French Normans? Do you think in a thousand years time, say in around about 2015, do you think there's going to be loads of foreigners coming over here? Do you think that's what they want? Next of all, you're going to tell me they're going to be digging a tunnel so they can come over and, at free will. But, but maybe they'll teach you some mathematics as well, Hereward. What a thousand years from 2015 is uh, 1015. Well, I never was very good at math, so I'm much better with women. <laughs> and and, and what, what do you attribute the secret of your success with women? Well, Bob, I just have a way with them. I know what they want. You know what I mean? And they like a, they like a good-sized uh, man. And they like to know that he's going to defend his homeland, which is what I do. I defend my homeland. And if they'd done the same thing in Norwich, you wouldn't have the problems you got here today, would you, Bob? No, but we, we, we pride ourselves on being a multicultural society where people from all walks of life, from all races, all religions, are welcome and loved and embraced in the bosom of English 
Well, that brings me that brings me on to a very good. Uh, I've got a question for you, Bob. Why have you not asked me the question about why? Why the question I was supposed to come on here about asking the question that you were supposed to ask me the question in the first place? When I went on the Jonathan Ross show, he asked me the question straight away, which is, what am I doing about about it politically, Bob? <laughs> what am I doing about it? Well, I, I've heard rumours that you've started your own party. I don't know what it's called. Um, if you could perhaps, you well, know. I have set my, I have set my own party up. It's called the USPIT <laughs> party against foreigners, specifically Normans. Although I don't like Jews either, they're very Jews. Uh, no, uh, not Jews. Harold, um, I understand some of your views, although they're antediluvian. Um, I can understand that you want to keep your country of Ely in, in the backwaters of development. But for your children... Do you know how many children I've got, Bob? No, I don't. How, how many? Well, I don't actually know how many children I've got, but I've got a lot. And do you know something, Bob, about all my children? They're all English. There ain't any Norman children. Because you know those dupe women that we get into Ely? that we use for milk processing. Those women, I always, uh, I always use contraception. Because when we've had a sheep on a Sunday, you know the intestines? So we, what, 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 you, you first of all fornicate with the sheep? You, for, well, you baste the sheep, and then you eat the sheep, and then you use part of the sheep to, uh, with the dupe women. Oh, I see. So you're talking in another way of having a sheep. Yes. Because what the Normans and what we French English <laughs> think <laughs> about the people of Ely is obviously a different interpretation of the word having a sheep. But so you cook a sheep? No, I shag one. Oh, I see. Then you take its intestines. I sh no, I sh you shag. The no, you, you shear the sheep, you shag the sheep, you eat the sheep. That's a perfectly normal English process. Not like you French boys. I don't know why you do. I wouldn't like to say. Well, we, we prefer gigot d'agneau or carré d'agneau, um, you know, which is uh, delicately cooked sheep. We, we don't, we, we, we French, we love women and we like to eat sheep. But of course, we, we we can discuss this forever. But Harold, the, the one thing I'd like to now terminate this interview is your thought for your children. Where do you see them in a thousand years time? What I would see them in a thousand years time is that they're all aunts and uncles and brothers and sister, sisters of each other. Because you know that obviously we like to keep it in the family. And I wouldn't see that there would be any Normans in England in 2000 and whatever it would be. In fact, England would be populated only by English people at all times. And the great thing about Ely is that it is a launch pad. It is a launch pad. People don't realise that it is actually a launch pad for us to retake England from the Normans. And that is what we're going to be doing. Uh, in the next uh, coming months. Well, well, well thank you. I, I cannot wish you good luck, um, Mr. Harwood, but I would like to thank you for coming to our studio. Well, I'd like to appreciate, I do appreciate the uh, questions that you have asked, even if they've been quite basic. Um, but then you are French, and obviously, not anyone who's not English is not uh, overly intelligent. So I think, you know, you've not done a bad job. You were better than Jonathan Ross. Well, well thank you very much, Miss Howard. And uh, from Capital tonight, bonsoir. Fucking Frenchman. But now I'd like to introduce you uh, to our dynamic computer technician who is going to guide you through the hints and tips and secrets of a new game. And it's now over to Eric the Unready the master of all games.